Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is tolerances for fillets and rounds. Today's question is, what are typical ways to add a tolerance to a round? For example, if I have a cube and want to add a 0.55 round to every edge, could I use a tolerance like 0.55 plus or minus 0.05? Or are there other or better ways to define a tolerance for a round? It's a great question, and in order to answer, we're going to have to open up a bit of can of worms. Uh, but let's go ahead and dig into the question here. We see the example with a cube that's got four corners. They all have a radius of 0.55 plus or minus 0.05. Now, this is a perfectly acceptable way to, to dimension and tolerance an outside round. It's also a perfectly capable way of dimensioning an internal fillet as well. Basically what we get from this dimension and its tolerance is two limits. Here we can see a limit of a radius 0.6, in other words, 0 0.550 plus 0 0.05. And we also have a smaller radius limit of 0.5, so 0.55 minus 0 0.05. And so we can see that as long as our radius, however big or small it is, is smaller than 0 0.600 and larger than 0 0.500, we'll pass inspection. So as you can see here, these two radii, large and small, will pass those limits. But radii aren't always perfect in form. What if we have a radius that looks like this? What value between 0 0.500 and 0 0.600 are you going to assign to say that, yes, we are within our limits? If we look at the radius over here, it's rather flat and probably a large radius. Whereas if we look at the radius that happens in here, it's a rather small radius and might be outside the limits of 0 0.500. But collectively, uh, if we average them out, we might have a pretty decent radius. So physically measuring the radii is a difficult thing to define. It's not like a cylinder where we can define the size using an envelope. And the hard fact of reality is that it will always be difficult to inspect and it'll always be ambiguous as to how you define what size that radius is and whether or not it's within your limits. Another thing to consider, even if we do have perfect form like we see here, is the location of this radius. The location of this radius can move. Nothing about the radius of 0 0.550 plus or minus 0 0.05 defines the location of where that radius should be with respect to any adjacent surfaces. So we can have a large step here and still pass the size for our radius. It has nothing to do with where that radius might be or how tangent it might be or if it smoothly transitions into any adjacent surfaces. We are simply defining how big or small that radius can be. Now this does open up a large can of worms for a lot of situations, but for 99.9% .9 of the time, these sort of radii and maybe a global tolerance from your title block without having to define the tolerance specifically in the view like we do here is going to be enough to control and make sure that the manufacturing process produced a radius that is going to function for the part, whether that's aesthetic or a functional stress reducing uh, radius or round or fillet. Uh, it's generally going to be a solution that works for almost all industries. Now, one other way to define this is to use GD and T. You can apply profile of a surface without datums to this radius. As you would see here, we get a tolerance zone and the width of that tolerance zone is defined right here. So we can control the form as well. So now no longer are we trying to define how big or small this radius is as much as we are trying to define and make sure that it's within this zone. So we can look like all sorts of shapes. We just need to make sure it's within that zone. And this profile of a surface call out right here will control the size and form of that feature by using this basic dimension to define the center of this tolerance zone. So we can control the size and form a little bit more directly and not have to worry so much about applying one value that represents this you know, sort of irregular radius. We also see here the profile of a surface call out controlling this right here. And that brings up an interesting topic. This profile of a surface is not controlled in location, whereas this one is. So if we're controlling where this surface can go, it's gotta be inside this tolerance zone here. But what's interesting about this feature control frame is there's no datum involved. So that tolerance zone can move and shift and rotate wherever it wants. The only requirement is the elements of that radius have to fit inside that zone. So we can shift it down here this scenario allows a rather large step in this area. Now, also more ambiguity arises trying to define if this step is included in this tolerance or if it's included in this tolerance. 
Again, avoiding this ambiguity is everybody's goal. But again, usually, uh, if the radius isn't critical, uh, most of the time this gets the job done. If the radius is critical, and you don't want to have a large step, or you want to make sure, do you want to control the location of this radius as well as its form and size? What's recommended is to use profile and use the same feature control frame to control all of the adjacent surfaces that are next to that radius. So as we can see here, we are controlling this surface all around. That links this radius with respect to these and these in its location as well. And it applies one tolerance zone to these features. And so now we can control the size and shape and form of that radius as well as its location with respect to the surface adjacent to it. Now there's all sorts of tools to accomplish this. We don't need to use the all around symbol if we want to just control the location, orientation, and form of this radius to the same datum reference frame, maybe A, B, and C, as the same one we did to this top surface. Now they are controlled locationally to each other. You can apply more tolerance to the radius or less tolerance to the radius or more tolerance to the flat surface or less tolerance to the flat surface. It's up to you, but if they're controlled to the same datum reference frame, at least you know you're controlling their location with respect to each other, as opposed to those two previous examples where location of the radius was uncontrolled entirely. Other tools like from, to, and between, as well as the dynamic profile modifier uh, are also great tools to refine and dial in on the exact tolerance that results in the uh, form location orientation that you're concerned with for that radius and their adjacent surfaces. So hopefully that answers your question uh, and doesn't open up too many more questions, uh, but definitely don't hesitate to reach out if you have more questions. Thanks for submitting and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by training experts.